Lee and Cheryl wanted to move to Spain to start a snail farm. But after four years, they still hadn't managed to find the right property. And their search began to put an enormous strain on their relationship. I really don't believe this is happening to me. Oh, will you get him out of here? Then, just as they began to relax and fall in love all over again, Lee developed a serious back problem. And during his course of daily pain-killing injections, he had a brainwave. I've come to make you an offer you can refuse. Tim, an English estate agent, has a front garden that's just crying out for snails. So you want me to become a snack farmer? Correct. So the man from the Snail Institute flew in and gave his seal of approval. When are we looking at getting it up and running? Next week. Within a week. OK. Lee and Cheryl have been back in Spain for a month. Though Lee still has to return to the UK in a few weeks' time to have a spinal operation, they could not be happier. The grey skies of South Wales and the fish and chips of Newport are not calling them irresistibly home. <laughs> but their holiday period is nearly over, and back at their rented farmhouse, there's an air of expectation hidden beneath their usual feisty banter. Clinica <laughs> liposuction Mabea for you. Are you a cheeky monkey? We'll have some of that. So am I the before or the after? Oh, you're yeah, the after. I you see we've got some visitors. Ah. Ah. Oh. Work on their snail farm is due to begin tomorrow. And so, Rafael, the technical director from the Spanish Snail Institute, has driven down from Girona to help them set up their new venture, together with his colleague, Bruno. He's Bruno. Bruno, how are you? Bruno, hello. He's coming as sleep. They've driven nearly a thousand kilometers today and are understandably exhausted. Hello. As before, this is your room. Well, he knows the show already because he's, he's done that before. Raphael has the spare bedroom that he had last week. But that just leaves the attic bedroom for Bruno. It's an attractive room, but Bruno is six foot three inches tall. And this is your room. Oh. I'm sorry that this is a cozy. I have to get away before I wake up, right? You're going to have to spend the whole nice. time like this. <laughs> yeah, it's all right. OK. Cheers. To our Cheers. project. To our project. project. Everything's going to be... Cheers. Okay. Right. God bless. Mm, it's beautiful here. It, I like, I like yeah. it. All the time when I want to be here yeah. is... The following morning, and after not the greatest night's sleep, the Spaniards have a treat in store. Lee has insisted on full English breakfast. We're having sausage, bacon, fried potatoes, mushrooms and eggs. That should sort them out for the day. Oh, and toast and fried bread. No beans? All right, then, beans as well. Although Cheryl clearly has everything under control, Lee can't resist lending a hand. Don't start panicking me. I've been fine without you for the last hour. Eggs? I haven't burnt any eggs! Oh, now we got burnt eggs. We haven't got burnt eggs. Don't keep on, Lee. There you go, Senor. Senor, English breakfast. Move your plate, please. Oh, thank you. And one for you. Beans, especially for Bruno. Your eggs are raw. Do you like raw eggs? Oh, it's okay. It's okay. Okay. Right. There. Right. Oh, and don't forget to explain about the brown sauce. Brown sauce. Very good. There's some more sausages. Sure. Now, do you smoke? <laughs> if you want more bacon, let me know. <laughs> you want to kill me or what? <laughs> <laughs> really I want to make sure you work hard today. First job for the morning is to round up the materials they will need. Like all the time, I don't carry nothing. 
<laughs> and in spite of advice from his doctors, Lee is too excited to hold himself back from any of the heavier work. It's happening. We're there. We're there. We're, we're yeah, getting we'll there. To, we'll you'll see a transformation now. <laughs> yeah, you'll get poorer. <laughs> <laughs> Lee could not be happier. He's never been shy about parting with his money when trying to impress women. Tell her she will be my favourite lady. I will come and see her every time I need <laughs> And he thoroughly approves of Raphael and Bruno's technique with the ladies. By the end of the morning, he's totally smitten with his new best friends. So we've decided now, Stasky and Hutch. <laughs> <laughs> Bruno, Bruno, we need to jump like a star and stay inside. <laughs> Meanwhile, because Lee will be too busy this week to go to the clinic, the doctors have agreed to let Cheryl give him his daily injection. But first, she's been told she must practice. This is Lee's one cheek, and what you have to do you have to draw an imaginary line down between the two and then cross it. And you must give the injection in the top right hand. This is my corner, basically. So I have to go aim for the top of the corner. So give it a couple of smacks. They do that and then go And it's, oh, that went in easy enough. The snail farm is going to be built immediately in front of Tim's house. And to prepare the land, they must first hire in a mechanical digger. As far as anybody knows, this land has never been cultivated before. It's heavily compacted and full of rocks. Lee is working like a man possessed. He simply can't stop himself from getting down to serious physical labour. It's the beginning of a dream. It's, there's a long way to go, but this is the start. In a couple of days, you won't recognise this. It's been a productive day, and Lee has taken a firm hand and insisted they're all in bed by 8 o'clock. I think Raphael and, and Bruno were a bit surprised that we were going to bed so early, um, because uh, they don't do that in Spain, as you know. But in fairness, they were a bit tired, so deep down they were quite happy to have a shower and go to bed, you know. Raphael, excuse me, what, what time do you normally go to bed? Uh, normally 11, 11.30, depends on the day, if it's more tired or less tired. But uh, no, 8, eight o'clock, <laughs> I don't go to the bed, 8 o'clock. Bruno, meanwhile, is not so much in bed as out of it, in every sense. Day two, and after another full English, the strength of Raphael and Bruno's stomachs is to be further tested. I'm shaking a grief for a second. I'm nervous now, that's the trouble. I can see that. They're called to witness Cheryl's graduation from citrus fruit to Welsh bottom. It's clearly not a sight they thought they'd ever have to confront. <laughs> Not even a spot? Did you feel anything? Like a dickhead. <laughs> the first stop of the morning is a local timber yard to purchase the wood that will eventually make up the snail's houses. Maybe it's just Cheryl's inexperience with the needle, but Lee has gone decidedly quiet. And realising that he's in pain, Raphael does his best to discourage Lee from the more physical task. But by the time they arrive at their next port of call, Lee is in a bad way. And finally, he decides to take it out on Raphael for apparently hiring the wrong tool. Complete and utter waste of time. But, never mind. That's a cultivator, not a rotavator. And he lit the rocks and just, well, you can do better with a rake axe. We could do it by hand for what we want. Suddenly, the bubble has burst. Lee becomes morose and uncommunicative, and the atmosphere is, to say the least, tense. Raphael and Bruno have no idea what they've done, but Lee stops talking to them completely, mutters under his breath, and gives them withering looks. 
The truth is that after throwing himself into it on day one, Lee's back and arm are seizing up. But he refuses to show himself up in front of his ex-best friends. He shouldn't be working at all, and the only thing that keeps him going is finding fault with Stusky and Hutch. It's not Dee's working a pair of them. Where's the working gear? Where's the tools? <laughs> I don't know. It's me, it is. The thing that seems to get to Lee more than anything else is that Raphael and Bruno have what he sees as a continental approach to work. They act as if it might be something you could actually enjoy. And when it comes to the cultivator, he just can't bring himself to watch. And it seems he might have been right. The cultivator makes a lot of noise, but no real impression on the soil. But Raphael and Bruno reckon it's the aerodynamic spoilers that are stopping the blades from getting properly stuck into the job. And sure enough, as soon as the machine is stripped down, it becomes a dirt-eating monster, which Raphael struggles manfully to control. So, is Lee pleased? Lee! <laughs> is he f***ing? So, while Bruno gets on with building snail houses, Raphael cultivates, Cheryl rakes, and Lee shakes his arm, nobody is talking. There's been some bad news for Tim. The land he owns in front of his house, next to the snail farm, was under offer. But yesterday, the sale fell through. And having heard about it, Lee and Cheryl are now thinking about There's trying to step in. Two here, but this, this one obviously them, next to the snail farm would be the answer. Mm. There. Down to that tree, I think it is. Yes. Yeah. So. It'd be perfect, wouldn't it? Really, from my point of view, they're fine as friends, so we get on fine. Um, but I just don't know if it's a good idea, really, uh, if, if they were to be living in front. You know, it's... it's a bit close for comfort, I see. So while Raphael and Bruno pick up where they left off yesterday, Lee and Cheryl put a proposition to Tim. There's two plots here, isn't there? There is two plots here, yeah. And they were sold. Correct. Right. And the man's fallen out. So why? Cheryl quite likes them, you see. So if. Do you, Cheryl? Yeah. So if. Right. But there's no for sale sign on them. That's right. Uh, that's because they're basically being sold privately. Yeah, at least, least sort of thought, well, you might have a bit of a problem selling that one, because you've got a snail farm right next to it now. But you see, if we had a deal on that one and this one... Yeah. ..we could leave you a nice garden there, you see? Mm-hmm. And we could move our snails down that end. I did obviously think about this before. Yeah. But I really think they're out of your, uh, price bracket. Out of price bracket. Come on, what are you thinking? That's 200,000 euros, so it's 150. 150. Well, if we could come down a bit, you see, we might be able to buy the two. Yeah, but seriously, <laughs> this is prime land. It's flat, <laughs> fantastic views. Absolutely. Stunning. So I, I wouldn't yeah, be prepared but... to uh, budge. To add to Lee's disappointment, the weather takes a turn for the worse. The snail farm schedule goes out of the window Yet somehow, Raphael and Bruno still seem to be enjoying themselves. <laughs> Anglo-Spanish relations reach an all-time low. And even though the rain has finally cleared, the early evening meal is not a jolly affair. In fact, for once, they'll be glad to escape to bed early. It's the last day of the build. The snails are due to arrive tomorrow, and the farm has to be ready. For once, the absence of conversation is not a big issue, 
as everyone has more than enough to do. The fencing still has to go up, and some 3,000 lettuces have yet to be planted. Just as everything is coming together, Lee is attacked by an almost invisible biting insect. Have you actually seen what it is now that's doing this? Yes, yeah, it's a little frog. Like a little midge, tiny, tiny little green thing. Yeah. But they do make a mess, don't they? His, his, his top of his legs are going purple. Where is it, the little sod? What? Raphael comes to the rescue with an old Spanish remedy to keep the bugs at bay, raw garlic. They don't bite you more with this. We don't like him more either. <laughs> yeah, you will like more him. Garlic is a sexual aphrodisiac also. Yeah, get yeah, out of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't believe. No. The bugs may or may not be kept away, but certainly the rest of the team are now giving Lee a very wide berth. But undeterred, he demonstrates to us the latest product of his mechanical genius. How does it work right-handed, then? Like that. It's very ingenious. It's a, you got left-handed, turn it round, and you've got right-handed. So, thanks to Lee, the lettuce planting continues apace, and he can now report that the garlic has made a big Did difference. Yeah, it broke me quicker now. I saw him against the light. He was there. Lee, your medical condition never fails to entertain, does it? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm a complete mess since I came to Spain. Hey, Raphael hey. makes himself scarce, but Bruno has been to the chemist. I'm covered in garlic. And they love garlic. Yeah, that's that fellow Stupid over there. Spanish. <laughs> so Raphael's treachery is exposed. <laughs> much to the amusement of the Spanish contingent. He didn't like garlic, so... <laughs> <laughs> But to give him his credit, Lee can see the funny side too. <laughs> Maybe the garlic had some effect after all, because all of a sudden, Raphael and Bruno are once again the greatest guys Lee has ever met, and the team pulls together to place the heavy-duty pipes that will drive the irrigation system for the snail farm. But even more significantly, Lee agrees with Raphael's suggestion that he should take his battered body back to the farmhouse and leave Raphael and Bruno to finish off. And all that remains is to test the irrigation system. A few minor adjustments and it all works perfectly. Snails are coming tomorrow. The snails en route, and they're all pregnant. <laughs> Is that what he said? Yeah, and they're all. They're he said all they were all mothers, so that's I suppose right. that's what he meant, was it? Yeah, so in in four months' time, we should have a hundred thousand snails there. It's snail day, or to be more precise, it's late afternoon on snail day, and a thousand pregnant mollusks were meant to have been delivered several hours ago. An embarrassed Raphael is making yet another call to his supplier. Sí, pero es que ya esta mañana me han dicho lo mismo. Venga, que estamos esperando. Avísenme cuando lleguen, por favor. Gracias. Hasta luego. Dios. What did he say? He said they are delivered. <laughs> delivered? They're not yeah, delivered. Yeah, in yeah. the right place. Well, they're not here. That is what I tell to him. Uh, is in the right place, no, because we are at the moment here and he's not arriving, the, the snails. But suddenly, a call to Tim looks like it may have solved the mystery. Because here, nothing and what's, what's in them? Sna what snails? What, can you, see, can you see inside the boxes? Has <laughs> <laughs> Tim they're gone. the police? They've gone to his office. And she's afraid of you the have I caught Helen on the phone saying there's a thousand snails turned up at the office. So, Lee and Raphael ride over to Tim's office at nearby Puente Don Manuel to rescue his besieged assistant, Helen. <laughs> Hello, Helen. Hello. I believe Hello. you have, you might have a package for us. Yes, it turned off about an hour ago. Right. I have people coming in all afternoon and it's just been a bit embarrassing because I don't want them in here. <laughs> You see, Helen? It turns out that Helen has a bit of a phobia about snails, 
and Raphael is keen to show her just how cuddly they can be. Look at this beautiful. I don't know why you are afraid. It doesn't bite. Oh, no, that whole really? little slimy thing. Are you drinking? Oh, look, it? that's disgusting. Oh, it's sliming all <laughs> But she's not convinced. And finally, the snails complete their long journey to their new home. Oh, you said the bird wings, did he? Up there we are. So I think Cheryl, you will put this. Your first. Your snail. first the snail. You That's will. Because this is like escape. expectant parents, Cheryl and Tim can't hide their delight at the arrival of their new offspring. Oh, I like. If all goes well, these 1,000 snails will multiply a hundredfold over the next six months, reaping Lee and Tim around 5,000 euros. Come on, my son. <laughs> Hey, you've got plenty of sons now. <laughs> the baby lettuces they've planted will grow, thanks to the irrigation system, within just a few weeks. And regular feeding with powdered food will help stop the snails eating the lettuces. Has it converted you to snail farming? I think. I would definitely think about it. If I have any more land, then uh, it would be an option, certainly. And speaking of land... <laughs> oh, yeah. Has he put in an offer yet? Don't be silly. It's Lee. No, no offer is yet. No. So we'll just have to wait and see. We'll leave him to his uh, snail, shall we? <laughs> so, despite the tantrums, traumas and medical disasters, Lee and Cheryl are now the proud joint owners of their very own snail farm. And the next day, as the successful snail rancher relaxes on his porch, it's time for Raphael and Bruno to ride on out of here. <laughs> We're ready. We're ready. <laughs> We're ready. <laughs> How long? Uh, it's lovely to yes. see you. Yes. OK, Lee. Thank you, Bruno. Thank we you very much. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All bad feelings are well and truly forgotten, as these unlikely friends bid each other the fondest of farewells. <laughs> we are now brothers. Have a safe journey. As they wave their final goodbyes to Starsky and Hutch, Lee is feeling well and truly pleased with himself. JD, job done. Yeah. You know, we're well, feeling. No, I think it's just started, really, don't you? Yeah, but we've done it. We've got the farm with Raphael's help yeah. and Bruno's help. We couldn't have done it without Raphael no, and Bruno. Have. There's no way. But um, we've done it. It's there. And it, the snails so are there. So next, all we've got to do is go back and get you back sorted. And, yeah. Uh, so that the... Tim's going to look after the snails while we're away. <laughs> and I think I'm going to make him an offer that he can't refuse on the land. But he thinks we're only going to be a month, doesn't he? But the yeah. reason we're going to be a bit longer is because Lee's got to have this either an operation or treatment. So what I thought was, if we buy a boat and we come down the Canal de Midi, then we have to do it a little bit slowly, and that'll give him time to rest. So Tim doesn't know yet, but we might be a little bit longer than that. <laughs> Yeah, this but is we true. will be back. We will be back. <laughs> Hasta la vista, baby. Lives at the pieces. Mm -hmm.